have it start out with we'll a little visual inspection of the Johnson 500 transmitter. Hey, welcome to D-Lab, everybody. I got a real treat for you ham radio collectors today. Take a look, a Johnson 500 on the bench. This one obviously has been restored. And who restored it? K1TLI. So here's the story. I hear it was restored approximately 15 years ago. It was shipped to the new owner. It sat in bubble wrap for about eight years. A new guy bought it, and it's been in his possession for about six years, untested, okay? So the new owner decided finally to get around fired up, and when he did, he told me he heard this horrible hissing noise coming out of the power supply and the unit would not power up. So when I heard that, I thought, oh man, that could be a bad power transformer, which would be a nightmare on one of these transmitters. So he brought it to me. I did my initial inspection. I know what the problem is. Let me show you what it is and how I'm going to fix it. All right, let's start out with a little visual inspection of the Johnson 500 transmitter. You can see this thing is just picture perfect. Beautiful paint job. Chuck does excellent work. This is automotive gray paint with his silk screens. Good as new. All right, now where the problem is though is down here in the power supply section. I've already got the power supply flipped up on its side because the first thing I wanted to do was pop that bottom off and look for anything obvious like arcing, loose wiring, etc. But everything looks pretty secure. It's got new filter caps installed. Now what I suspect the problem is, is this main power relay. I believe what could be going on is it's sitting there buzzing and chattering. I've seen this before on these old transmitters. The coils on these old relays age. They lose inductance and the relays cannot pull in properly. So what I've done is I've bypassed the switched AC plug. Okay, so the 9-pin plug is disconnected. If you look at your schematic, you can go across pins 1 and 2 of that plug. All right, so I'm going to activate just the power relay. The rest of the power supply is not going to power up. And I've got a Variac set up so I can watch the current in case something goes wrong. I've got a little bit of a safety buffer. All right, I'm going to set this thing up, poke the camera in the power supply, and I'm going to let you see the problem. All right, so now you get to experience the same thing that the owner did when he initially powered up the transmitter. As I said before, it would not light up, but he would get this, as he called it, a hissing noise. Okay, so we're looking at the bottom of the power supply right now. Right up here is relay 301. That's the main power relay. Okay, we are connected to that at this point with the Variac. I'm going to flip her on, take a listen, and then I'll bring you in closer so you can see it better. So here we go. Buzzeramus. Okay. That relay right there is what's causing the noise. Let me get you in closer. All right, close up view on relay 301. I'm going to apply power. You can see what's going on. Those contacts are chattering. And if you allowed this to continue for a long period of time, it would more than likely damage the power transformers in this power supply because you are pulsing the power on and off causing current surges could easily wipe out a transformer. So it's a good thing the guy didn't run it too long. So here is what a good relay should sound like when it's being energized by the 120 volts AC. You see there? Nice snap action, no vibration. This is a good relay and this is the one that I'm going to replace in the Johnson 500 power supply. So taking a look, you can see that this relay would be a real tough bird to find, okay? And if you did find another relay that would do the job, more than likely, you couldn't cram it into this little area that the original's in. And that was a challenge that I was faced with, is replacement of that main power relay. Luckily, I located this old vintage powder and Brumfield relay that has the proper contacts 
to handle the load of this power supply, but it will not fit in that area. So I made an adapter bracket, and what I'm going to do is put her down here on some standoffs, and I'm going to swing that wiring down to the new relay. Let me get it mounted up and give you a better view of what it's going to look like. All right, there's a the new relay in place. I've got it on some standoffs. There's plenty of spacing. Terminals do not interfere with a wire harness. Should be a piece of cake to swing this wiring down to the contacts. So I'm going to get all that installed and they will test. Now here's a little light on the situation. I took out the two mounting screws. The relay is loose, but the wiring is not. It is tight back there. So what I'm going to have to do is extend these wires to make it down to the new relay. Really don't want to do that, but I have no choice <clears throat> unless somebody has one of these sitting around in their spare parts bin. This is the way it's going to be. Progress report. The old relay is removed. I've extended the wiring and I identified it. W for wiper on contact one and then C for the contact. And we've got C2, W2 back there. Also extended the coil wires. So now it's time to hook up to the new relay. Alright, our new power relay wiring is complete. I've got the Variac. I'm just going to flip around real quick, make sure it engages. Remember, I do not have the 230 volt connected to the power supply. So what we're doing is exercising the new relay. Looks great. Alright, let's hook up the 220, see what happens. All right, moment of truth, people. I'm going to turn on the key switch. I've got the nine pin plug back in the power supply where I was jumping in the 120 for the relay. So if the interlocks are all good, when I flip the switch, she's gonna come on. First time in 15 years. Here we go, watch is off. There's no wine in this view. <laughs> there will be afterwards. Here we go, people. Guess what? She lit right up. No buzzes, no smoke. That's great. Now I can have a glass of wine. Here's a quick view for your reference. I do not want to leave this on with the power supply laying on its side, but at least you can see the relay energize and things light up. And you hear the fans operating. She's nice and smooth. Pretty sure it's fixed, at least for power up. All right, well, thank God that worked. I had to bring out Robert Mondavi to celebrate the victory of powering up the Johnson 500 for the first time after 15 years. All right, well, I'm pretty confident that we can test the Johnson 500 now in transmit mode. That relay failure had nothing to do with the RF deck. So let's go ahead and fire it up and see if she transmits. All right, everything's nice and lit up. There's my grid current. I am currently on 40 meter band. You guys know that's my go-to band. So let's go into tune position. We're in AM mode. Here we go. Look at my watt meter in tune. It's putting out a little over 100 watts. Pulling about 80 milliamps of current. It's a good deal. I'm going to go to cathode current now. I'm going to go to operate. Let's see what we get. Hello. Hello, one, two. Hello. Hello, one, two. Whoa! Yeah, I figured that would happen. Pop the reset because I'm not fully tuned up. Give her a couple seconds here. All right, we're back in business. We've got output, we're in tune mode. When I'm going to operate mode, I did not have it fully loaded up properly. Drew excessive current and popped the reset. 
but it appears as though the 500 is going to work. That's pretty cool, huh? All right, here is a snapshot of the 500 putting out full power on the 11 meter band. Oh yeah, don't want to leave that going too long, smoke my dummy load. Alright, we'll give her a little modulation. Hello, hello, one, two, hello, one, two, three, four, hello, hello. She's gonna talk. Alright, so it looks like that new owner got lucky. This transmitter laid dormant for 15 years, just needed that power relay, and she sprung to life and it looks like it's going to work out just fine. I believe this may be the first Johnson 500 that I've worked on in this shop. I've worked on some in the past, but never featured those, so now you got to see a true classic in operation. Thanks for tuning in.